Hi everyone, Kate here, and this week I'm going to be sharing with you some gift ideas from the 1910s and 20s that still make great presents today. Now most of the suggestions for gifts made in magazines in this time period don't really translate well into what somebody today would enjoy receiving. However, hidden among the corset covers and lace yokes, which I personally would love receiving, but anyway, are some ideas that are truly timeless. I've tried to pick a selection of different types of ideas aimed at different people. Obviously, these are just generic suggestions. You really want to tailor any gift to the recipient, and not every idea is going to work for everybody. This video is just really meant for some general inspiration. I've also included a mix of store-bought and homemade ideas. Now, <laughs> I obviously lean towards homemade in everything I do, but I know some people just prefer to buy gifts for, for some reason. <laughs> They don't start their gift making in like July because it takes so long. <laughs> How boring. <laughs> so without making this too long of an intro, let's just jump right into the list. One of the gifts I see suggested very often in antique magazines is throw pillows. These are a gift that can be easily customized to the recipient's taste and decor style. This is also a good one if you're handy with a sewing machine. Pillows are a very quick and beginner-friendly sewing project, which can be customized with different fabric prints, trimmings, stencils, appliques, or even embroidery. If you have friends or family members that love to cook, why not give them a personalized box of recipe cards? In the 1917 book, A Thousand Ways to Please a Husband, Bettina gives a set of indexed recipes to her friend Alice, all packaged in a nice card box. I like the idea of including some treasured recipes or family favorites, and then supplying some blank cards as well so the recipient can then add their own. While house plants are quite trendy at the moment, they have long been considered good gifts. Giving an indoor plant already in a decorative pot makes a stylish addition to a loved one's living space. I know I'm focusing more on the 1910s and 20s for this video, but for a bit of a Victorian touch, may I recommend a fern? You actually still had ferns in the 1910s and 20s as home decor, but it was much more of a Victorian thing. Another idea that I think would be super cute is to get somebody a plant and then look up the meaning of the plant in a book about the language of flowers, and then handwrite on a little card what the plant means. For example, peppermint can mean warmth of feeling. This of course only works for plants that have positive meanings. <laughs> you don't want to give somebody a red geranium and tell them it means stupidity. <laughs> That's not very in keeping with the Christmas spirit. <laughs> Kind of funny, but not very Christmassy. If you live on a country property, or otherwise have access to evergreens you're allowed to harvest, some fresh greenery makes a lovely early Christmas gift. You could use it to make some arrangements, or give big swags of it to an in-town friend who would otherwise have to pay a fortune at the florist. This idea works best if you're seeing someone in enough advance of the holidays so they actually have time to enjoy them. Pine cones or other dried botanical bits for decor can also work.
Modern households tend to have a lot of stuff. So instead of giving someone more stuff, why not give them something to store the stuff in? This is an easy one to tailor to your recipient's preferences and style. It can either be a new box, a beautiful vintage one, or even something homemade. Homemade boxes were a very popular gift choice during this time period. These are also great to use as both gift and part of the wrapping. Think of putting a small piece of jewelry inside a vintage trinket box, or some delicious goodies in an old basket tied with a bit of ribbon or decorated with some greenery. Pin cushions or sachets make great stocking stuffers or little additions to a gift bag. It's also a great way for us sewists to use up some of those many bits of scrap material that seem to multiply when we aren't looking. Lavender is a common filling for sachets, but you could also use rose petals or whole spices such as cinnamon sticks, cloves, and star anise. I also made a tutorial last year for sachets filled with pine needles. I have one in with my braids at the moment, and it smells lovely. This gift suggestion for an alarm clock from 1919 was specifically aimed at men, but I think it makes a good gift for anyone with an interest in home decor. I realize that many people just use their phones as a clock nowadays, but it's hard to beat the style of an old-fashioned alarm clock. They can be found relatively inexpensively at antique stores and look really neat on a bedside table, if nothing else. This is the time of year that us knitters and crocheters really shine. Giving homemade socks or slippers are very appreciated by older folks or those with chronically cold feet. For those of you who don't knit, you can always go the store-bought route. For a few years, my friend and I always bought socks for one another, with some sort of wacky design picked out personally for the other. Socks and slippers wear out fairly quickly, so you can really do this year after year and still have them appreciated. A bray or tam makes a great gift for the fashionista on your list. They are always in style and come in a multitude of colors. You can also customize a plain beret either with embroidery or needle felting or adding a vintage brooch if you're not particularly crafty. Another great idea from one of my favorite 1920s magazines is making a little bundle of face masks and giving them an acute decorative box. Making dry face mask mixes is very easy and you could package them either in little bags or envelopes or in some of those cute little cork bottles I've seen at the dollar store. This can also be done with a hand-picked assortment of store-bought sheet masks and individual clay masks. Be sure to put them in the cutest box or tin you can find.
Another common gift of the 1910s and 20s was that of linens, specifically ones for the kitchen or dining room. These can be beautiful vintage linens or homemade ones. I had great success last year making a tablecloth perfectly sized to my mother's dining room table. She loved it and we actually used it that night for Christmas dinner. If you sew, and especially if you have a serger, a tablecloth is ridiculously easy to make. It's basically just a big rectangle or a circle depending on the person's table. You could also enhance it with embroidery or lace or trimmings if you wish. Pretty tea towels are a safe bet if you aren't too familiar with the recipient's linen requirements. Another suggestion I've seen often recommended is for a matching desk set. With all the working from home that's been going on lately, this could prove to be a very practical gift. A stylish set of pen and paper holders, maybe a tray and some bookends, makes a great choice to perk up the home office and keep things organized. These can be store-bought, antique, or homemade. The last thing on my list isn't really a gift per se. This is sort of just a little bonus idea. And that is to include a real photo in with your Christmas cards. In this digital age, real photos have become rather rare again. And I've found that people are surprisingly appreciative of a real tangible photograph. It can be a photo of either yourself, your family, or of you and the recipient together. It could also be a photo taken many years ago for a bit of added nostalgia. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed this look at Christmas gifts past and present. If you still feel the need for a little bit more inspiration, here are a few ideas that didn't quite make the cut. It's actually a little bit early for me to be releasing my holiday video, but I thought if this was going to be of any use to anyone, I kind of had to release it now. I might even be a little late. I've personally done most, if not all, of my Christmas shopping already, which is actually kind of a very historical thing to do. 
A lot of women used to start prepping gifts actually in the summertime. If you're making gifts from scratch, you really do have to get started early. You see in a lot of summer needlecraft magazines, them mentioning uh, something like summer, summer work for the Christmas gift box or something like that, where they had patterns specifically intended for presents that you were to get started on in the Christmas. And I, I personally did get started in Christmas this year and it was much, much better. <laughs> Still got work to do, but it's going along a lot more smoothly than it normally does. There was a little bit in Bettina's A Thousand Ways to Please a Husband. Um, I'll see if I can find it. I try to get all my Christmas packages ready by Thanksgiving, said Bettina. Of course, I don't always succeed, but it is a splendid aim to have. There is always so much to do at the last minute. Baking and company and candy making. So Bettina was American, so that would be the end of November, right? <laughs> I'm Canadian. We had our Thanksgiving like weeks ago. <laughs> okay, this is <laughs> not really on the list, but can I can I put cats on the list? You best present to myself ever. Yes. Yeah, Aggie is my adorable little scruff muffin. She's a shelter cat. She's got no teeth. And she's got the personality of a 1930s little gangster. I should have named her Cagney. She says she's got an attitude. And she wants Joan. Oh. Ah, okay, there you go. Sweet one minute and shoving grapefruits into people's faces the next. <laughs> it's my Aggie. Well, I think I've rambled on long enough, so I will end here. Please let me know down in the comments if you're giving any interesting gifts this year. I always am on the lookout for more gift suggestions and ideas. I go a little crazy. I've been making all kinds of batches of like fun Christmas soap this year. Soap is a great gift. If you can make soap from scratch, people love it. People that don't like handmade creams and lotions, they get kind of weirded out by that. They will still like soap usually. <laughs> My whole room smells like peppermint. <laughs> it's kind of nice. It's also good because I'm sick. The, the peppermint is very soothing. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye! This video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you.